Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Even in 2019, Chinese-made guitars don't have a great reputation. For the longest time, the only guitars coming out of China were brands' lowest-tier, entry-level offerings, or straight-up counterfeits. I mean, there were always diamonds in the rough, but to put it bluntly, overall, they were garbage. Now that's a perception that's been hard to shake, but in recent years, things have been different. Craftsmanship across the board is much improved. Some of the higher end guitars from industry leaders are produced in China. And more excitingly, there are several companies taking up the challenge of creating high end, internationally reputable Chinese guitar brands. 10S is one of those companies. Now we've talked about 10S before, at the beginning of the year they sent me one of their production models, the GF Relic. That was their take on an aged 70s inspired single cut. For less than 400 bucks, I was kind of floored. Full thickness body with a carved maple cap, ebony fingerboard with real mother of pearl inlays, aged hardware and Grover tuners, and an, albeit overdone for my taste, hand relict nitro finish. That's ridiculous value for money. You may have also seen their 20 string guitar that they made for Stevie T. Okay, we'll be honest, you've definitely seen Stevie's surfboard. Now they also run a custom shop and they asked if it would be okay to build me a custom guitar to my specs. I don't think anybody's ever said no to that. And this is what we came up with. Let's take a closer look. Now when 10S asked me to spec out a guitar, we could have gone with something tried and true with like a couple modifications, but they wanted a challenge. And so I asked for something a little more unique. Hence this gorgeous thing, a seven string single cut. So just a bit of clarification, while I spec'd out most of this guitar, I did allow 10S leeway to make some of their own creative decisions. Like I wanted to be fairly hands off once I presented them the challenge and let them add a little bit of their own 10S personality into the build. So I'll point out stuff like that as we get to it. The body is made from a single large piece of mahogany. Then we've got a set through seven piece maple walnut neck. Several of the pieces have a nice flame going on, which is really cool. Then we've got a bound 22 fret zero code. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know, man. I can't read dictionary pronunciation guides. Then we've got a bound 22 fret zero code. Fuck it. That's what I'm going with. Fingerboard with a compound 12 to 16 inch radius. But the theme of this guitar quite clearly is the poplar burl. Now I wasn't too sure how this would turn out. You don't see poplar burl too often on guitars. And when you do, it's usually a very thin veneer. 
but on this one, 10S has used thicker pieces of highly figured wood. The body has a two-piece carved 5A poplar burl top, and then there's an additional 1 8 inch piece capping the headstock. I love Unique, and not only is the poplar burl uncommon for a single cut, it also came out looking just as good as I had hoped it would, especially with the blue stain. I love all the highly defined figuring, the natural gaps which haven't been filled in, and just the general unpredictability. Even if you tried making another guitar with the same colors and same specs, the geography of the top would be completely and distinctively different. And I mean in terms of wood selection, 10S has found a really good piece for this top and a really good piece for the headstock too. The Zero Code fingerboard has all these dark streaks running through it. The recessed truss rod cover is also a piece of poplar burl with a dark stain. The pickup rings are buckeye maple, even the pickup covers are ebony. Like I love how much natural wood is on display here on the front especially, but also on the back. Speaking of which, the back of the headstock has also been stained blue, which is pretty cool as it fades into the natural, and there's also a silver agafish mola mola swimming happily underneath the tuners. Then I had originally asked for satin, but 10S added a thin layer of semi-gloss nitro, which makes the colors and the figuring really pop. The cream binding works well, especially on the neck, though now that I'm seeing how cool the headstock works with natural binding, I'm kind of kicking myself for requesting the cream on the body as well, especially since the binding is where most of this guitar's many but minor visual imperfections are. The lines aren't always clean on the fretboard, there's a ton of tool marks, and there's even like a little chip near the cutaway. All little things, nothing huge in my opinion, but still worth pointing out for expectation's sake. The one major aesthetic thing I'm really not a fan of is how Tennis has done the 12th fret Agafish logo. It's plastic, not sure why, maybe for a cleaner image, but it's kind of jarring to have a random black block in the middle of a nice Zero Code fingerboard. But that shouldn't take away that as a whole, you can't deny that this is a very pretty guitar. And in terms of weight, because of the popular burl, it's also a lot lighter than you'd expect from a 7-string single cut. So that's the build, let's talk about the hardware and the components. Starting with the most often criminally overlooked feature, we've got a Graftech Tusk Nut. The installation doesn't look too pretty, but it's well cut, flush with the neck binding, and permanently lubricated. Graftech is my preferred nut provider, heh <laughs> heh so not much more you can ask for. And then it has Godo 510 locking tuners, which are their higher end option. These have something they call Lubra Plate, which is a coating of a special polymer which keeps them permanently lubricated and therefore smooth for the duration of their lifetime. Just like the nut, they're permanently lubricated tuners. How cool is that? I can't say I'm huge into the massive plastic tuning buttons. They're a little gaudy for my taste, but I guess they fit with the overall color scheme of this guitar. I think I might try and track down wood buttons instead. But point is, with so much permanent lubrication, this GF has great tuning stability, something that a lot of 7-strings struggle with. Speaking of potentially gaudy, we've got gold top hat knobs with silver reflectors, the edges of which have been hammered down for comfort, like how Matt Hafey used to do on his 60s VOS Gibsons. It's little details like that that I really appreciate. The bridge and tailpiece are made by Sunghill in Korea. Sunghill is also responsible for manufacturing Tone Pros, and their own hardware is comparable in quality, though much more affordable for manufacturers and dealers. I mean, it's a hefty tunematic, it's a hefty tailpiece, it all feels very solid. For other features, we've got Lumen Lace side dots, which are always super awesome. Glow in the dark side dots, who says no to those. The custom builds also come with this sick wood laser engraved spec sheet, which is really cool. They don't have to do that, but they do. As we know, all high-end parts and choice wood selection doesn't always necessarily make for a great guitar. It's all about how the pieces work together in tandem, how it's all put together, and the build quality of this 10S is very solid. Not gonna lie though, out of the box, coming from China, the setup was pretty atrocious. The action was unreasonably high, and the intonation, especially on the lowest string, was off by a decent amount. After quick truss rod, bridge, and saddle adjustments though, it's much better and a ton of fun to play. The 22 jumbo frets are made of stainless steel, which is one of my favorite features that's becoming more common on modern instruments. They're shiny, they're smooth, they're incredibly hard. They feel quicker than nickel frets to me, and also I'll never have to worry about refretting this thing. In terms of fret work, everything is level, no sharp ends, and for the most part, look clean. So I haven't had much or any experience with Zero Code before this 10S Custom. It's a pretty uncommon fingerboard material on production guitars because it's stupid expensive. Gibson doesn't use Zero Code at all, PRS only uses them on their private stock models, so it's a pretty high-end feature. To me it feels very similar to Ebony and, according to a quick Google search, is supposed to have similar tonal properties as well. I chose a compound fingerboard radius for the occasional lead stuff on the higher frets, and then riffing out on the lower frets. Now something that puts me off most extended range guitars is that while I like round neck shapes, the necks on 7 and 8 strings tend to be really flat to accommodate the extra width. It makes sense. 
I just don't like it. My favorite is the Thin U, so that's what I requested on this guitar. All these build features combined, plus a tunematic bridge, makes this feel overall like a modern Les Paul, but with an extra string. I mean, this is a seven string for me. I mean, this is the seven string for me. For sound, these humbuckers are hand wound by a company called Four Seasons which specializes in custom pickups. Now, I know not everybody runs their guitars through a high-end Mesa, 100-watt Marshall, so for more relevant tone samples, Boss has graciously sponsored this video. Their line of Katana amps is super popular right now because they sound great, they're affordable, and they're absolutely feature-packed. We've got five different amp styles, a ton of built-in Boss effects, and even a power soak down to 0.5 watts for bedroom usage. I mean, for 350, it's so sick. Because I've got the Two Notes Torpedo live, I'll be using the full 100 watts with the Glenn Fricker Angle 412 Fredman IR. So, here's some tones through the Boss KTN 100 head. So honestly, these pickups look awesome, but sound okay for me. They're supposed to be powered by Alnico 5s, which are usually warmer and fuller, whereas these sound kind of thin and a little cold. By themselves, they're a little uninspiring for what I prefer, but they do work better for tracking in the context of a full mix. It's also easy to just adjust the amp settings and compensate, so the eagle-eyed amongst you might recognize that this is not the version that was shown off at Winternam or in my guitar collection video. That had a screwed up truss rod, which we didn't realize was broken until it made it to Atlanta, and I couldn't adjust the neck. Don't know how that happened, 10S doesn't know either, but they offered to ship it back to China on their dollar, fix it, and ship it back. That's not cheap, but it was their mistake and they owned up to it because they care. Honestly, that's a practice that not every company does, but it's one that a lot could learn from. And actually, they used that opportunity to change a few things as well. For one, the headstock on the V1 was massive, we made that smaller. They stained the back of the headstock, stained the top of the body a deeper blue, gave it pickup rings, upgraded it to a zero code fingerboard to compensate me for the inconvenience. Bottom line though, this is totally my type of 7-string. Relatively short scale, so the gaps between frets aren't massive, thin new neck shape, 12 inch radius at least on the lower frets, tunematic style bridge, 4 and 3 headstock. Honestly, it's kind of like a 7 string for someone who doesn't main 7 strings. There aren't any production models to the spec that looks like this with these material choices with this build quality. I mean, blue stained poplar burl top with a matching headstock, a 7 piece neck, and a zero code 8 fingerboard, and it plays well. For $12.99, who else does that? That's the beauty of an affordable custom shop. You conceive something that no one else makes and it comes to life. I mean, it's by no means an immaculate build, but at $12.99, it's also more affordable than a lot of even standard production models. Finish-wise, I wish there was more attention to detail when it came to the small visual things, but in my opinion, it's fairly priced for what you're getting, and most importantly, 10S makes great playing guitars. And I mean, overall, the thing looks f***ing unreal. I'll leave links in the description to their reverb store where you can get in contact for a quote, and you can also check out the $400 GF Relic regular production model, which is just an amazing value buy. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. I think this thing is fucking amazing. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, that way YouTube lets you you know when I upload a new video. Thanks to Luke for mixing everything, for 10S for building this guitar, and honestly, to you guys for putting me in a position to have this opportunity. You can directly support me on Patreon and get some bonus perks as well. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description as always. Thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.